Welcome back to the homestead everyone. Today we're inside and we're going to show you how to construct a hearth for your wood stove. Stick with us and see how we do it. Now a hearth is a really important thing to have for your wood stove. You have to have one. Why? Well, contrary to popular belief, a hearth is not to prevent heat from burning your floor. It is simply as used as a spark arrester. If a spark comes out of your stove, it hits your hearth, which is a non-combustible surface, and it doesn't start a fire. So hearths must be 18 inches from the front of your stove, and depending on the size of the stove, it can be eight inches on the sides, eight inches in the back, but you're going to need to consult the actual literature from the specific stove you buy and it will vary it will be different for a stove built say 20 years ago before certain EPA uh, guidelines were put into place so make sure you study and look at the specifics for your particular stove but 18 inches for ours from the front and out the side so what we've done here and I'm going to show you and uh, where we're going to put the stove in our home and talk about how we laid things out, all right? There is a lot involved when calculating your uh, stove placement. Don't be fooled. There's a lot of calculations you need to do. Not only do you need to understand how big your stove is and then how big or how far your hearth needs to extend beyond your stove, <clears throat> you need to adjust that for where your chimney pipe is going to go up through the ceiling. Now let me show you something here. So we've gone up, and I'm going to try and focus here. We've gone up into our attic and as you can see right there we've got some marks. We've got some screws coming through from our attic space. We've got a screw going up into it and we've got this uh, kind of bullseye mark in Sharpie right there. What we found out was <laughs> we have trusses and they are spaced two feet on center, but right at this wall, we don't have a truss. It actually spans between both uh, or spans over the wall. So the wall sits in the center of uh, where two trusses are. Unfortunately, I can't cut a truss to run our stovepipe up through and get the proper clearances. So I had to go up there and I had to come out four inches from this wall. That added four inches onto our hearth and that's how we laid it out. Now we just went here and, and basically make some marks on our floor uh, where our hearth is going to be. We're essentially going to be 54 inches out from this wall and we're going to come in 12 inches here and we're going to have, I think it's three foot four inches in width right there. That'll give us good clearance uh, from the bookshelf. But that can always move. And it will stay out of the way also of traffic coming in and out of that hallway. Now that we've got our measurements laid out on the inside of the house for exactly where our hearth and our stove need to be, we're out here in the shop and we're going to show you how we are going to make our hearth. Now this might be a little bit different, but this is one way of doing it. Now a hearth is used as a spark arrestor. Modern stoves are really fantastic in that they are quite sealed up and you do not need a lot of uh, heat protection on the floor. They're highly insulated with fire brick insulation, so on and so forth, air gaps to mitigate any heat transfer to the floor. Now if you have an older stove, this video isn't going to apply to you. You're going to need to uh, figure out what that stove is and how to build the hearth per the proper standards. But this one is a brand new stove, you know, EPA certified, blah blah blah. But all this hearth is is a spark arrestor. So we need 18 inches in front of our stove. We need 8 inches on all other sides. And that is it. What we're going to do here to construct this is just put down some backer board and some porcelain tile on top of it. 
Around the edge, we're going to use an aluminum reveal. Now, this aluminum reveal that we purchased is a three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch. But make sure you understand the thickness of your materials. On the inside here, where this backer board is going to sit and the tile is going to sit, is 11 sixteenths. So ours sits down just under flush inside of that aluminum reveal. We're going to screw this aluminum reveal to the floor and I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to sit dry. We're going to dry stack, essentially, our tile in there. So we're going to cut them really tight and set them in there. Now, <clears throat> if you have a really heavy stove, a really old heavy stove, you want to understand what weight your materials can take. Porcelain tile is incredibly strong. They use it on floors at car dealerships, but their mortar underneath it is absolutely perfect so no cracks uh, develop. And they really don't use super, super thick uh, porcelain tile in those cases. This should handle this stove no problem. The stove is only, I believe, 350 pounds and it doesn't have point loads, i.e. it doesn't have four feet that come down and bear all those, all that weight and point loads. This one has a big uh, ash compartment on the bottom and a square base so that load from the stove, that weight from the stove is distributed more evenly. So this is more than adequate to hold the weight of that stove and obviously the pipe above it. All we're going to do next is cut our aluminum reveal per the dimensions that we determined our hearth needs to be. From there, we're going to drill some pilot holes so we can secure it down to our wood floor in the house. On top of that, and set into it, we are going to screw our backer board to our wood flooring in the home and then <clears throat> just set in our tile. Obviously, we need a tile cutter to cut everything perfectly. We're going to need to score and cut our backer board. Now, our floor in that area of the home is fairly level. We're on a crawl space. We've got wood floors. We've got you know, wood frame construction, floor joists, decking, so on and so forth. We're not on a slab. So we're not going to spend the time sealing the floor and pouring a self-leveling concrete and then putting down backer and then mortaring in tile. That's just way overkill. This dry stack method, I think, is going to work perfect, especially for the weight of the stove. Now, you're going to need to determine in your specific situation what's best for you. If you've got a, you're on a slab and you've got some holes and some dips, pouring a self-leveling and sealing things up may be the best option for you. So you need to determine per your project. This will work for many applications, but not every. So from here, we're just going to start to cut our reveal. We're going to cut our tile. We're going to score and cut our backer. We're going to bring everything in to the house and assemble it. Let's go. We've determined that for our hearth, one eight foot length of the aluminum reveal will work perfectly for two sides. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut out this V and bend our reveal around this edge. What's that, what that's gonna do for us is give us a nice clean edge here that is not sharp. And that works great for the kids around the house. Now that we have everything cut to length, we're going to drill our pilot holes for our screws to hold our aluminum reveal to our wood floor. We're using these flathead screws so that they'll sit nice and flush on the inside where we sit our backer board and our tile on top of that. Concrete backer board is really easy to handle. Basically, you make your measurements. You can scribe a line with a pencil if you like, just to uh, properly transfer your measurements and then scribe it with an old razor blade. From there, just hang it over the edge of your work surface. And there you go. So here we have our backer board dry fitted inside of our 
uh, aluminum reveal here or our border that's going to hold everything together. We've got it clamped down. Now it's time to cut our tile. Lay it out in the pattern you want it. Here we've got uh, 24 by 12 inch tiles and it's just the style that we chose and liked. Uh, your tiles <coughs> could be, you know, 12 by 12, 16 by 16, 18 by 18, whatever, 24 by 24. Whatever you like. Lay them out in the manner that you like. Now, if you're going to mortar it in, you need to follow the instructions uh, for mortaring, which is a 15 to 30 percent overlap on each tile, and not a not a 50 percent or uh, or greater on that. <clears throat> in this case, it really doesn't matter because we're just dry fitting in them in there and setting them down in our reveal here in our bed, essentially our hearth bed. So. I think we like the uh, the staggered pattern back and forth. That's going to work for us and look the nicest for us. Maybe I might change it up and do uh, a middle tile and two on, on the edges. I'm not sure yet. What you're going to need is a simple scoring style tile cutter. If you have a tile saw, that's great. They're expensive, so that's why I don't have one. But if you have one, use it. And uh, this is going to work fine for us. Just cut your tile to fit inside of your frame and you're good to go. After that, after we're done with that, we're going to take it inside and we're going to assemble it and screw it to the floor and then we're done. Okay, we're back inside and we're ready to assemble everything. We are just going to line up our aluminum frame here with the lines we already drew on the floor and the measurements we already took. And I did go ahead and I countersunk all of our holes here so our flat, or our, yeah, our flat heads fit uh, nicely and snugly in there. We're going to drop in our tile and our backer board and we should have beautiful hearth ready. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi. Oh, IT nice. Okay. We've been working. Yeah, working. Working. Okay, now that we've got our frame assembled on the floor, we've got our backer board sitting in there. I am going to secure the backer board just so it doesn't, you know, move around too much and keeps a more of a flat level surface. So I've got these uh, special backer board screws here. They kind of grip into the exterior. It actually comes with a bit because they are a Torx. So it comes with a Torx bit. So we're going to secure it down. Not in the uh, normal fashion you would, not the spacing you would. So uh, just a loose spacing, not every eight inches like you would need to do in a standard uh, tile job. All right, the last thing we're going to do is fit back in our pieces of tile that we cut out in the shop and make sure you fit them back in the same order to ensure that everything fits nice and snugly the way that we had it before. All right, here's our completed hearth. You can see it's really low profile, which I love and I know my wife loves too because it's really not that much of a tripping hazard at all. It's really out of the way, uh, but it is also really just barely bumped up above the floor there. I think that this tile really complements uh, the wood floor nicely. And as you can see, I didn't quite finish uh, cutting the tile this evening. No big deal. I'll complete that in the morning. Well, we hope you love the project. It's really easy to do and it really didn't cost that much money at all. We'll put the list of materials down in the description below and their costs, but we spent basically less than sixty dollars on this and if you go and look at uh, pre-made hearths or some other types of hearths they're very 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 expensive hundreds and hundreds of dollars so i hope you like this and what we want you to do is we want you to stick around on the channel we want you to hit that subscribe button like the video share it on social media share it everywhere it really helps us out a lot and also go visit us on countrylivingexperience.com and go down below and Click on our Amazon store, 
The link is right at the top of the description and it shoots you over to our Amazon store which helps out our family a lot. We've got all the tools and things that we use here on the homestead that we highly recommend. So thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. Have a great day and we will see you on the next video. Thank you.